Okay, uh, welcome guys. Okay, so like I was explaining, uh, uh, my Zoom is giving me 40 minutes, so we have two sessions so that we can have uh, enough time, okay? Um, okay, so, okay, I'm sure everybody can, everybody can hear me there. Okay, okay, so let's continue, guys. Um, Okay, so we're going to continue where, where we left, functions of uh, advertising. Let me share my screen with you. Uh, okay, so... Okay, uh, so remember, we said functions of advertising, okay? To persuade, to inform, Okay, to encourage people to buy your, your products. Okay. Uh, however, there is another very important function of advertising, which is to educate or warn the public about various social problems, like I was explaining before. Like nowadays, we have a good example of COVID-19. We've seen a lot of uh, advertisements informing us about COVID-19 how we need to sanitize our hands and things like that. So basically the type of advertising, it's called information advertising, okay? Just like when you talk of your HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, or any other pandemics or healthy uh, disasters that we, we know about, okay? Uh, advertising information, it is a very significant impact on the formation of the consciousness of each individual. I don't know how, how young you are, but back in the day, there was an advert in the early days, in the early, early to mid nineties, there were advertisements about HIV and AIDS. And those advertisements, they used to use uh, very horrific and gory sounds. Okay. So when that advertisement used to come on TV, you to have a very, you know, those kind of horror sounds that you find from the movies. The reason was it was scaring people that if you get HIV, you are dead. So stop sleeping around. Okay. So those type of advertisements, however, is evolutionalized now. They have changed now because now we understand more about HIV. We know it's not once you get it doesn't mean you're, you're going to die now. But early in the days, because we didn't have much information, we didn't have... Um, more research about the, the disease, all the advertisements were, so, were very gory, were very scary. They'll show you people with skeletons, people who are already in bed, dying, things like that. But it has changed, it has moved from that. Now you see when people advertise about HIV, you see healthy people telling us, I have been positive for the past 10 years or 20 years, things like that. So those types of advertising information they play a very crucial role in understanding pandemics, in understanding diseases, in understanding or in bringing consciousness as an individual, how you understand, okay? So it is very important now when advertising is being uh, targeting consumers, besides like just promoting a product or a service or an idea for a political party, every advert has an effect on the character of social relations, okay, of people, causes consumer instincts, encourage people to improve their financial status or state. I understand you've seen even uh, advertisements where they say, if you use this particular brand or product, that means you're living well, that means your life is okay, that means you are up class, that means you're not poor, okay. We'll talk about how that kind of advertisement is structured later on in other um, modules. So now it is very, very, it is of paramount importance to understand that informing and persuading, they work together in advertising. And usually they're just considered as one function of advertising. We usually term it as informing, persuading, okay. 
So now we are living in a world where we have so much competition in the world. We have so much competition in nearly everything. It can be shoes, we have competition there. It can be cars, we have competition there. So as a company, you have to make sure you understand the competitive marketplace where you exist. Okay, so now that's why you see a lot of emphasis is now being put on brand image, your image of your product or your services, your image of your company as the basis of consumer discrimination. So now advertisement plays a crucial, a key fundamental role in developing brand image. Why am I saying this? Is because it informs consumers of the features and functions of the abilities of a brand. They'll tell you, for instance, if you put a Samsung and an iPhone, the way they advertise, they're different. Uh, I, uh, Samsung might have uh, a new phone with whatever, 50 megapixel camera and iPhone, the latest will still remain with a 12 megapixel, but the quality of these two pictures are totally different. And you can actually tell mm, the quality is kind of different, even though this one has more megapixel in terms of cameras. So when iPhone advertise, it makes sure that it creates an image that will align itself to quality, durability, and uniqueness. That's why today we all, the moment you see an iPhone, we all know ah, this is an iPhone. You won't doubt, you won't mix it like, oh, is it a Samsung or is it, uh, what's that, uh, you can help me here? What's that other Chinese phone? Uh, Huawei, what would you call it? Huawei or Huawei, something like that. You can actually tell the difference. It's because of the way that they create a brand image when they advertise, okay? Um, Mazui, are we together then? Mazui, can you hear us? Uh, let's say D, let's say D, can you hear us? Oh, okay. I don't know if you can hear us, but hopefully you can hear us. Uh, Akona, do you have any questions? At the moment, no, um, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, future CEO, can you hear us? Okay, I'll, I'll continue. Hopefully everybody can hear. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so the functions of advertising, these are very important to understand. Okay. Whatever that we're going to do in this module, we'll come back to the functions of advertising. What is the function of advertising? What is the purpose of advertising? Okay, we we'll always come back to, to that. Okay, now, this advert, the Marlboro Main Campaign, for those who smoke, I'm sure they know this. Uh, I didn't know, because I don't smoke. Uh, this is one of the greatest advertising campaign of the 20th, 20th century. It has been studied, it has been researched. Uh, the argument is this advertisement, it changed the, advert, the way companies advertised, okay? So it is one of the most important uh, advertisements, okay? So uh, I want us to watch the very first minute here, okay? There is no place where advertising is more relevant than in the cigarette industry. Brand loyalty is extremely high, so it's important to a cigarette company that they're the first ones that you smoke. It's also important to distract the customer from the obvious Faustian bargain that their product will eventually kill you. 
necessity has made these companies masters at advertising. And until 1970, when cigarette advertisements were banned, nobody was better at this advertising than Marlboro. No cigarette or packaging is more recognizable, more American, more smoke than this one. But Marlboro did more than just win the advertising war with their rivals. They changed advertising forever. And how did they do it? Well, when Philip Morris started the company in 1847, it was aimed at women. It didn't work very well at first. However, in the 1950s, when new studies came out that smoking caused cancer, many tobacco companies started to panic and change tactics. It was at this point that Marlboro made a key move. They switched their advertising tactic to men and became the first ever lifestyle advertisers. Okay, pause. Before we go further, it's very important that you know exactly what lifestyle advertising looks like. The good news is you're already super familiar with lifestyle advertising even if you don't know it. It is when a commercial tries to tie its product to something else in your life. A feeling, an attribute, satisfaction, the list is endless. Like when an energy drink ties itself to extreme athleticism or a camera to adventure, a soda to happiness, a car to love, or a phone to more than just a phone. Once you're familiar with the term, you'll notice it's the most popular and effective form of advertising that we know of. But it wasn't always this way. Roll the clock back 60 years and people had a much different idea of how to advertise a product. Take a look at this camel ad from the 50s. How mild can a cigarette be? Well, I've been smoking camels for 20 years. I know they're mild and they really taste great. Yes, camels are so mild that in a test of hundreds of people who smoked only camels for 30 days, throat specialists making weekly examinations reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Why is this ad so unconvincing? Well, everything is fact and product oriented. Buy my thing over their thing because all our researchers say so. But the truth is most of us don't care about that research. I'm buying a pack of cigarettes to be cool, not because doctors say it's more smooth than a competitor's. So in the 50s when Marlboro changed sexes, they also changed their advertising strategy by selling their product as a symbol rather than just on the merits of its design. They did this by creating a smoking cowboy known as the Marlboro Man. The Marlboro Man was designed to be the archetype of manliness. He was hardworking and living free. So with that last commercial in mind, watch this commercial and notice how much less screen time the Marlboro cigarette gets and how the focus of the ad has shifted away from an isolated product to encompass a feeling of a rough, rugged, free life. In other words, they weren't just selling cigarettes, but rather a feeling of freedom and adventure. And there's maybe a slight irony here that most cowboys did not smoke at this time, but it said dip, but most people didn't care. Within one year of this campaign, Marlboro went from owning less than 1% of the market to being the fourth largest cigarette company in the world. And within four more years, it became the number one selling cigarette in the world, and it remains that way to this day. The Marlboro Man is a legend in advertising and shaped the future of advertising forever. And I think no matter what your stance on cigarettes are, we can all learn from Marlboro's lesson to help us communicate with others. People don't want to be sold a product. People want to be sold a feeling, a connection, something that's worth more than the paper that it's printed on. Okay. Uh, I'm sure all of you could hear that. Okay. So what made this campaign successful is it moved away from the ancient advertising where the focus was on the product. Okay, so I'm going to bring it closer home so we can all understand it. What they are saying there is advertise this advert was the very first one that moved away from just selling a product or just showing people smoking or telling us some weird statistics things like that. Nobody cares about that. It introduced personal feeling. It introduced attachment. It introduced how feelings can be incorporated in an advert. Okay. So now, Marlboro was saying, if you're smoking this, it means you're cool. If you're smoking this, it means you have freedom. You are free. You can do whatever you want. So it introduced that connection between the product and the people. Okay. And we've seen this now in a lot of our advertisements today. When they advertise, they bring that attachment to people and say, okay, if you are using this product, that means you are so intelligent. Or if you are using this product, that means you're full of love. Or if you're not using this product, that means 
you don't have style. You're not part of us. You're still way behind. Okay. Do we understand what I'm saying then? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you just raise up your hand. I can pick it up from there. Okay. Um, okay, so let's move on. So this advertisement, was, it, it ran from 1954 to 1990, and it was very uh, successful because of its repositioning of the cigarette from a, it used to be a woman thing, but it introduced the men thing, it had introduced the attachment thing, the feeling thing, and things like that, okay? And this uh, Marlboro campaign, it, it was so successful that the market changed, the cigarette brand was well positioned, that even 45 years later, is still one of the best cigarettes, okay? Um, so, now we understand what is advertising. Non-personal communication, non-personal communication of messages. It is a technique used to influence and persuade and inform people to react in a certain way, either to buy a product or a service. Okay, so the purpose of advertising is to inform the customers or consumers or the target uh, market uh, about their product, okay? Whether they have goods or services to sell, companies need to inform potential consumers. So every company needs to advertise. If you don't advertise, it means people won't know about your, about your product. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I have a message, Mangalisa. You're saying you're having problems with your, with your Zoom. But can you hear me, though? If you can hear me, you can just raise, uh, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, uh, Mangali, so can you can you hear me now? Okay. But anyway, uh, I'm recording this as well, so I'll upload it on YouTube. If you're having any problems, you can just catch up. Uh, you can catch up there. Okay. Okay, so I was saying, what then is, uh, the purpose is to inform the consumers about their products or, or services or things like that. Um, so advertising provides a way of doing so through a vast and ever-growing toolbox of mediums. By toolbox, uh, what do I mean? I'm saying we can use different media platforms. We can use newspapers, we can use TV, we can use uh, magazines, we can use um, we can use social media nowadays. Okay, is a way of uh, communicating uh, with our target audience or target market. By target market, it means those that you believe that can have an interest in your product or service. Those that you believe can buy your product. If you're advertising sneakers, those you believe will believe uh, want to buy sneakers things like that, okay? So uh, the purpose of advertising from a company perspective is to inform the consumer or target market, okay? So from the consumer's perspective, ask the consumers as we, the people that buy, what is advertising, okay? So when people say they hate advertising, some people usually reply, say, no, you don't. You hate bad advertising, which is very true. I tend to enjoy uh, chicken leaking advertisements. I don't like their chicken, but I tend to enjoy their adverts. Okay. Can anyone here um, share with us any uh, adverts that you really enjoy watching? Anyone, it can be anyone. Okay, let me pick names. Um, Pilo, can you tell us about an advert that you enjoy watching or the, any advert that you 
you hear on radio or that you have read in a magazine that you prefer the most? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna tell us of one advertisement that you enjoy the most that you can't forget. To be honest, I also enjoy the chicken licking ones more. Um, yeah, it's just it's mainly the chicken licking ones. Okay, we. we uh, which one specifically? Which one? Me, I enjoy the kung fu one where it says master. I brought you a piece. That one was 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 just great. Um, I think it's the Soul Sister one, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, where the choir line? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, okay, maybe others are having a problem with network, I'm not sure. Okay, so in advertising, there is a belief that bad things ring the run or the fun for everyone. So if you produce a bad advertisement, hey, people won't forget, it's going to be bad forever. It's going to be bad forever. And it can be bad even for your, for your, in, uh, for your image. Okay. Because remember, advertisements now are one of the best instances for this rule, that bad things ruin the fun for everyone. When an advertisement is too obvious or heavy-handed or otherwise, you know, purely executed, the sound is bad, it screams, even the characters are just boring, it's too, it's too long, you know, people tend to say this is a bad advert. Once it's a bad advert, they'll associate even your product with the bad advertising. Okay, because the first thing that's gonna come out if you advertise badly, it's, ah, uh, hey, you remember this advert on TV? Or you remember this uh, poster or billboard, things like that, okay. Now, it is important now to understand that consumers have different attitude, just like us. We are in a class, we have different attitudes, we have different uh, feelings towards any, anything else, okay? Our approach to life, our philosophy to life is different. Just like in advertising, some will enjoy chicken licking adverts, some will not. Some will tell you, I prefer the McDonald's adverts. They are funny. Some will tell you, no, they are not funny. So people are different, okay? And there are people who think, hey, in advertising just, they are just lying, they're just manipulating, they're just a waste of time. There's nothing like that, they are lying to us, okay? So just like our needs as consumers are different, even our attitudes and our feelings towards an advertisement are different, okay? Some consumers may center the approach on advert itself, whether they are de displaying a legitimate case for the brand or they are offering on the off chance that they make the consumer need to relate to the brand, it all depends really consumer. So balancing these different desires, attitudes, is very difficult for advertisers because each person will feel different about advertising. Hence it is very different and difficult. That's why you see it difficult for an advertisement to influence, to persuade everyone in a way that the advertiser wants, okay. Uh, okay, so now let's move on to advertising from the advertising agent's perspective. So we're gonna learn what is an advertising agent in the following lesson. But in brief, I'll tell you this. Advertising agents, these are companies that specifically deal with producing, creating, planning of advertisements. So in advertising agents, their only function is to produce advertisements. So there are different types of advertising agents. We're gonna learn all that as well. Some, they only specifically deal with motion, meaning they only deal with videos. And some will say they only deal with graphics, they only deal with either print 
advertisements. The advert that you see in magazine and newspapers. These are all different advertising agencies. Some of you are going to, to be advertising agents, are going to work there. Some of you are going to start your own companies within that field, things like that. Okay. So advertising agents sees the practice of advertising is an opportunity for both the business and creative output. On the business side, the production of advertising is important to the agent's existence, meaning advertising agents need businesses to advertise because if businesses don't want to advertise, advertising agencies will not have any jobs. Okay, so they need businesses to advertise. It is businesses that create jobs for advertising agencies. Okay, so advertising agencies work with your business, they work with your objectives. What is it that you want to achieve? You as, a, as an advertiser, when you approach an advertising company, you say to them, okay, I wanna create a 30 second advert. I wanna aid on TV. This is what I want. I want this and this, this and this. The advertising agents as a company that is filled with people of expertise, they will create an advert for you. They work within your budget because you're gonna, they, they're gonna coach you. Of course, they're gonna tell you, okay, in order for us to create this advertisement, we need, 50,000. Then you say, no, I don't have 50,000, I have 35,000. They work within your budget. Okay, so advertising agents, they develop in advertising, they create marketing campaigns. The reason is, oh, they are trying to satisfy business needs. Okay, on the creative side, besides the business side, on the creative side now of the advertising agents, they try by all means, they strive by all means to push uh, boundaries of advertising into film, games, and other spaces in order to make something truly new and unique. By this, that's why you see these days we are being bombarded by different advertisements from different companies. The moment you log in on Facebook, you see advertisements. The moment you go to, a, to an online shopping, you see advertisements. The moment you are even watching a movie online, you're seeing adverts. They are everywhere. And sometimes they're very boring. The reason there is they are trying by all means to be everywhere, to be seen by everyone. Okay. Uh, so a successful advertising campaign for the agent is one that pleases the client and achieves the desired result. Whether that is increased brand loyalty or better sales or improved public image. However, it is important to understand, it is difficult to measure how successful an advert was or is, because it's very difficult to tell if someone bought a product because of an advertisement. It's very difficult. It's very difficult for us to say, okay, most people are buying these uh, Adidas shoes it's because of that advertisement that they, uh, they saw on SABC or on ETV. It's very difficult to, to conclude that. But however, a good advertising campaign can improve your public image, which is very true. Quality advertisements will be aligned within positive public image. Okay, any questions? Any questions, guys? Okay, no questions, okay. Uh, so I want you to go through this advert on your own. Uh, then you're gonna ask, uh, you're gonna answer these questions, which below questions, these three questions. This is a very funny advert, very funny. It's a doom advert. Uh, or rather, okay, let's do this one, then you do the, the second, the second um, advertisement. Okay, so let's do this one first together. Okay, um, this is a, a, a doom advert. Okay, let's see here. If we can do this one together quickly. Let's do this one quickly. Okay, 
hopefully everyone is uh, funny advert okay question number one through that advert that we've just seen provide reasoning as to why the doom advert will be considered an advert as per the prescribed definition why would you say that's an advert a mangaliso do you think this is an advert or it's not an advert? Uh, I do think it's an advert, sir. Why, why, why are you saying it's an advert? Uh, as much as I haven't seen it like on YouTube now, but I can see that it's, it is indeed a, uh promoting uh the doom brand product mm -hmm. and also uh there's uh um i'm not 100 percent sure though but like there's also like a, a little a video per se that 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 that, that, that contains maybe humor because it seems like there's some hu the humorous dancing by looking at the picture mm -hmm. <laughs> to try and get the, the consumer's uh, maybe attention. Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. It was by all means uh, trying to get the attention of the consumers by saying, instead of you stepping on uh, cockroaches, just buy doom. It's easier that way, isn't it? Because <laughs> uh, now, now, now you have a guest there and you're being yeah. embarrassed that you have cockroaches. So in a uh, way, so in a way, Doom is saying, instead of you being embarrassed when you have guests, always use Doom. It performs better than your legs. Okay, so that's, uh -huh. <laughs> that's the sense uh -huh. behind that. Okay, so question two uh -huh. then. Uh, Zenzo, question two is for you. Why do you think the advert was effective? What made this advert very successful? I remember watching this advert on SABC. What do you think this advert was effective? So for most parts, I, I would think it was effective because people can relate to the advert. Correct. But um, at the same time, I would assume that it's it's mainly for black communities if you look at the advertisement. Because with the scenery and all, it's it's something that you would generally find in a black household. So <laughs> what they're trying to say, I don't necessarily like this advert because there's a lot of bad connotations, you know, <laughs> like cockroaches are found in black people's houses, you know? <laughs> so um, I like how they executed it. Well, not necessarily, but they, it was well executed for an advertisement. It was effective because in the end, you can see the effects that Doom has. Mm -hmm. you know and how how quickly it, it responds when sprayed you know and just like how quickly the thing dies it just dies and then yeah people are laughing and so forth so yeah i feel like it was effective in that sense okay okay i like that i like that so i, I, I okay on the on the connotation side you say uh you kind of like uh producing a prejudice that we have properties within black people um, I don't know. So what do you think they should have put even white people there? You see, to make it universal, I feel like they should have maybe incorporated a better scenery, you know, like maybe 
um, mixed race, you know, maybe um, a few white people, you know. Okay. Yeah, shut up and then have them <laughs> be involved. Okay. You know, and not yeah. just a black woman looking crazy and dancing <laughs> and chasing after a cockroach. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I understand your political side. But now let's go back to yeah. our definitions of advertising. We say it, it targets specifically certain people, isn't it? So that means this. Yes, so yes, that means true. this. So this means basically this advert was specifically for for us, Ekas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> remember sense. we say one because remember we say one advert cannot fulfill the needs or cannot evoke the feelings, the attachments of everybody. Some will like it, some will yeah. and one advert cannot target everybody. It has to create a certain or specific target uh, market. In this case, Doom is targeting those that maybe are living in a middle class to lower classes, which, yes, yes. which I would say in South Africa, the dominant is us, we black people, isn't it? We, that advert is not saying there are no cockroaches in white people's places. No, it's not saying that, but that is basically targeting the middle class black people. Okay, uh, okay, we left with three minutes there. Okay, so quickly, do you think this advert will be relevant to other audiences around the world? For example, if this advert was broadcast in China or UK or wherever, in, 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 in Ghana, in, in Morocco or Zimbabwe, do you think it will be effective or is it going to be relevant? Akona. Um, if we go with it by the way Senzo was um, explaining it, I don't think it would be successful. Treats like the connotations. And I don't know if in China they have, uh, I know they have cockroaches, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's as bad as here, yeah, if I could say it that way. Um, what with I, this? I, 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 Wait, wait. With this particular advert, I don't think it would be successful. If we do it in a way that like Senzo explained it, the way it was like, I guess like biracial or something, maybe it would be successful. But to them, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it would be. <laughs> oh, okay. Even, even okay, let's let's think of this. Even if it's in, uh, in Botswana or Zimbabwe. Yeah, Senzo, you can, you can, Zenzo, you can say something. Yeah, well, you see, she's correct. And for most parts, with this, when it comes to this question, mm -hmm. I would say it's successful. Reason being, the people are not saying anything in any particular language. Mm -hmm. They're just portraying actions, mm -hmm. and it's easier for someone to understand mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's easy. It's pretty easy to analyze and get the, the, the advertisement all at one go. Mm -hmm. So, other than the racial um, aspect of things, looking at it from a, a racial point of view, I feel like it would have been a, a successful advert. Except, I just don't like the fact that it's black people. But okay, I understand <laughs> the point that it's. it's, it's and it's I don't the know if they use, Do they use doom in China? Yeah, well, maybe China makes everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah. Okay, we we we're gonna continue um, on our last next lesson is on Wednesday, isn't it? Okay, so we're gonna continue because now uh, um, it's less than a minute to cut off any time. So thank you guys for coming. Uh, I'm gonna send this slide. Uh, uh, if you don't access it on core campus, I'm going to make sure that everybody has it. Okay. Uh, you can also send me your, your email uh, via WhatsApp. I can always, um, I can always, uh, what do you call it? Uh,